Welcome to Crew Matches. I'm your chatbot, Chatty. You have selected High as Elvian as your interface language. If this is correct, please state continue. If it is not, please state your preferred interface language now. Drama shudder reflexively. Chatbox and Galactic Standard were always too... bright and cheerful. Too open. Too fake friendly. She ran a claw through her quills to settle them. Continue. The screen flickered as it refreshed. The rounded letters of G Stand replaced with the comforting angular glyphs of her native Zelvian. Thank you for your selection, honored customer. As we would like to ensure the best possible match for your crewing requirements, we beseech you to provide us answers to a few short queries. May we have some small measure of your time? Better. Much better. The little avatar on the screen even replicated the right body motions to convey respect. It was all still fake, of course, as the VI wasn't actually alive, but as the saying went, the intent of the actor, not the final result, is what is most important. While the VI was irksome, Drahama couldn't fold the program if I wanted to try. You may continue. For brevity, I ask that the formalities be dropped. Please address me as a merchant, addressed as a merchant. Understood, valued customer. Firstly, is an AI acceptable for this crew role? Negative. The ship does not have the processing subject required. A virtual intelligence would not be suitable either. I hear and understand. What crew role or roles are you looking to fill? I need an R3 or above rated engineer, preferably experienced with slip drives manufactured by Squally and Otherspace. I additionally need a galley hand, a navigation officer and 30 labourer technicians. I hear and understand. Kindly tell me about onboard working conditions, so that I may filter my list of candidates. Very well. The ship as a whole runs with a gaseous nitrogen oxygen atmosphere, with roughly an 80-20 split. Temperature varies by sections of module, depending on cargo. In general, temperatures can vary from 274 to 320... Well, forgive the interruption, if you please. May I please ask by which temperature scale you are defining this? By the barrows of colour, Drama's quills which had been suddenly raising up as her frustration grew, suddenly raised into a full defensive posture. Talking to a VI was always somehow infinitely more frustrating than talking to a living being. Even talking to a Reggie in their flowery, overwrought prose was more tolerable. This time, the Zelvian didn't bother to settle her quills. She was alone in the captain's quarters, and it wasn't like the VI would care after all. All measures are in galactic standard. The ones those Terrans call the System Interstellar. Thank you, valued customer. Please may I ask you to continue to list your vessel data. Drahama grumbled. Why couldn't the damn VI just read the data of the ship's database? Oh yes, the Data Security Act. Yet another of the plogues in a Joint Bureau for Data Transmission and Communicative Wavelengths decrees. Honestly, trading in plogues space became less and less pleasant every time. She was getting to the point where she'd rather pull out her ear quills than have to sit for another update briefing. No thank you, she replied sarcastically. Temperatures range from 270 to 320. Pressures from 80,000 to 150,000. The engineer can set temperature and pressure as they please. The galley is set to 300 temperate units and a pressure of 100,000. Technicians will be provided with appropriate gear to work across the full range. Please, dear customer, is the entire vessel's gas filled? Yes, so no aquatics. May I inquire as to the humidity? Standard low. Species needing humid air must provide own respirator gear. Gravity is set at 0.7, but may be adjusted for cargo. Map boots are standard in ship's uniform and exorcists are available. Thank you for your information, honored customer. If it pleases you, please review the records of our available crew. They are presented in recommended order. If you require further filtering, please but ask. About time. Oh, filter out any species that can only tolerate dextra amio foods, and any that lack a sense of sight. The list was still some thousands long. The Reclaimer War had left thousands dispossessed, and a certain fate of space qualified individuals. Using the expression Anthony had once taught her, it was a sad but true fact that a lot of people desperately in need of employment by the Zelvian merchant fleet were simply not cut out for it. It was going to take hours to pick out candidates and read their psychovals. Later, with cools oiled and scented, Drama laced in her nest with her crew harem to discuss the potential new hires. They had already been talking and arguing for hours, with the egg-sitting males being the most outspoken. The females, not to be outdone, had been the loudest, however. I don't think we can have a plus. They smell awful. That's discrimination. It's true. No one but a plus can stand the smell. We have this amazing technology called deodorant. It's used as mandated, much as you seem to forget. Still, though. My murder, Spikey Beard. Look at this one. An Really? Yeah, hang on. 
A hologram of the massive four-armed Obion floated to the centre of the room. The cause of all the Gamma Zelvians rustled in appreciation of the musculature on display. Very impressive specimen. What position are you thinking? All of them. Accompanied by a cool wave from Cresta Hoof, it was clear that this one of Drama's harem was entertaining some thoughts that would definitely draw the ire of the interstellar department of sentient resources. A wave of answering, amusement, and mocking disgust, cool displays, rippled around the nest. I don't disagree, but what qualifications does Drama Chet the biodata? She possess? Oh, none. They're only qualified for intrasystem work, but... But nothing, Quillhead. Stop thinking with your genitals. The thinking with my genitals is how we made this egg I'm sitting on, oh, Captain. True, but also disgusting. Another horror member, a female, chimed in. I have a Rithi with an R2 level and slip drives. No experience with R-type, but it's the best qualification to pay ratio I've seen. Are we speaking suspiciously cheap? Maybe. I'll send it to you now. They continue for hours, with candidates rejected, shortlisted, scrutinised, and put on the final list. The following ship daybreak, after morning mating, the final ten candidates for officer positions were reviewed. So the Zelvian Dishem is our best candidate for navigation? Drummer asked her first mate. Yes, Captain. Forty-five long-haul flights with no navigational errors. Commended Osmium Starburst for heroism and site reports they had fit in well to the harem. Request standard scale free pay. Accepted. Now what about Galley Hand? Still undecided, Captain. And labor technicians? About that. The crew was in the first mate's crest parted slightly, betraying her anxiety about what she was to say. Out with it. Well, I know that the Anthony incident might be a bit fresh, but we thought that some Terrans might be best. I see. And why, my beloved, are you anxious to say so? First mate Varela smoothed out the cause that had betrayed her. Well, you see... First mate, out with it. Because of how Antony left the ship, we thought that increasing the number of Terrans might not be a good idea. I mean, they make up nearly 40% of the crew already, which is almost the same as the number of Zelvians. But if more Terrans and Zelvians fall into that kind of misunderstanding, then it might disrupt the harems, and damage the pack bonding between the humans and the kin on board, as well as create a tense atmosphere for the other crew species and... Stop and breathe. Relax. Let's move your curves, my love. You've got them all worked up. Drummer lovingly again generally helped her first mate, set her cause back into place. They continued brushing Barella down to keep her calm and relaxed. Barella was a great exo, calm and composed in the crisis, eagle past stern and caring to those under command, as well as a wonderful mother to the hashings they shared. Her one Achilles heel was her aversion to embarrassing personal moments. What happened with Antony was... unfortunate, said Drama. An understandable but regrettable result of differences in culture, species and norms. With the guidebooks for both the Terran Federation and Zelvian Parliament updated, I don't think we need to worry too much about the incident being repeated. But, my love... Barella, shush. I'm not embarrassed or ashamed. Well, not excessively so about what happened. I thought Anthony was intimating he wanted to be part of the harem. I thought it would be interesting for us to invite him in. Everything after that was... What was it? A comedy of errors? Errors. A comedy of errors. Are you sure? I thought it was errors, as in a comedy for the ages. Errors, as in a comedy caused by mistakes and misunderstandings. Well, anyway, it was a mishap, and it was for the best that he left, but I don't think either of us should feel ashamed. I better think twice before addressing a Zelvian captain as my gorgeous porcupine centaur again, though. The pair laughed, and the giggle and clatter of cools ran for the horror members, who'd gathered around when they heard the topic being broached. My harem, my officers. Have you realised how much the Terrans have affected us? We've adopted parts of their speech and thinking, their fearlessness to an extent, their boldness. I think having Terrans aboard has been a boon to us all on the cultural level, and an economic one with the way they work. Damn straight. They work hard and play hard, and get her done all over this tin can, chirped in Diorama, the communications officer. Stop taking the piss with it, replied Trama. But considering the work we do and the cargo we haul, I want them. They can tolerate the full range of temperatures and pressures we're licensed to run at with no gear, better than even Arithi. They're stronger and faster in ship standard gravity than anything except an Oblion. They're tough, heal almost as quickly as we do because of their metal ability to scour up, and they've got almost as much endurance as me in a mating rut. Another clatter of amusement rolled around the bridge. They pat bond in themselves like a harem, with other groups almost as strongly. They've got the mental resilience for the long haul, and they make all of us happier. And the beauticians really know how to get even me looking my best. You are still as beautiful as you were when I met you, purred Barella from inside Drama's arms. The first mate's crews were quivering slightly. 
Aside, I know it's still mating season, so please remember to take your suppressants after morning mating. Clear heads on shift, please. A double dose for you, Barilla. Barilla headed over to the bridge drink dispenser, and Julie took her second dose of medicine. A quill cool settling once more as it took effect. Drama continued. Anyway, as I was saying, Terrans are okay with me, and I promise not to try and mate with one again. At least, not for a while. Another clatter. You know what? Sod it. Get a human galley hand as well. Just, you know, not a British or American subspecies one. <laughs>